So I got the KMC on there. This is a brand new chain. It does look, you know, like you'd, you'd look at that chain and go, oh, that chain, you gotta chuck that in the bin. You know, so that knob jockey, zero friction cycling, Karen would say, chuck it in the bin. But look, all it needs is a, a bit of basic clean, okay? Basic clean, and you're gonna be good to go. We'll give this thing a clean up. You can sort of see the sand there. This bike does ride pretty smooth. Okay, that's just the deal here, <laughs> all right? Don't chuck stuff in the bin. Give it a clean, reuse it. As long as it's safe, it's good to go. This bike is in very good condition. The railer hanger is, yeah, dead straight. All right, dead straight. Look at this thing, you know? It's like a pretty much a brand new bike with just a lot of shed dust and stuff on there. Rides really good. I uh, took the, they did have a flat tire, and I think the reason why is these rim tapes, people never use these rim tapes. These are for BMXs maybe back in the 80s. We put some proper rim tape in there, otherwise it, it cause the eyelets cause a flat tire, they puncture the tube. But yeah, open pro rims, brand new. Look at that. You can still see the, uh, you know, that, all that stuff, the, uh, what do you call it, the machining. You know, it's got a bit of a corrosion stuff that will just all buff off when you're riding it. But you know, again, you can't sell this stuff because people in road cycling have been taught that it's all about the fancy schmancy. So this stuff is uh, still perfect. The bearings <laughs> brand new. <laughs> you know, but this bike, this bike was advertised for ages, but people just snobbed it because the the uh, these these are clean. People are lazy out there, aren't they? Anyway, thirty two spoke open pro rims. These are a very very nice rim. Incredible braking surface, uh, really, really fantastic. So we'll get this all started up. The tires, it's a Maxxis refuse on there. Very strong tire, not so fast, but I'll put some fast tires on there. But these are a good tire for commuting if you just don't want to worry about flat tires as much. These are very, very strong. And these are, yeah, pretty light. Yeah, it's a 32 spoke, I prefer 28 for my weight, but uh, more spokes, the slower the wheel is. So that's why disc brake bikes are so much slower on the road because they have more spokes. And they've got that rotor catching the wind. This is a very nice bike. These frames are incredible. Like this is a, a very, very nice frame. I'll compare this to an SL, you know, what much better than the SL7 tarmac. This is more like an SL3, SL4 quality. It's very, very nice to ride. And uh, you know, but so understated bike, you know. But I would flog you know 99 percent of 99 point nine percent of riders on this bike, you know, just because of one my fitness. But two, this is a very, very high performance bike, especially once we uh, give it a full Dune Rider race tune spec. There we go, just just like that. We have a, a nice safe rim strip in there. Fantastic. I found these in a bin from a bike shop as well. Crazy, stuff you can recycle. Look at that, it's already starting to clean up. Wow, it's already starting to polish up really nicely. Let's just see where it was. Like that, and now, it's going like that. There we go. You see, what I'm, you see what's happening here, don't you? So I've got some tyres here from uh, bike shop bins. Uh, what should we put on there? I reckon some GP4000s would be a nice choice. Uh, a couple of GP4000s, thanks. See, I always run a new tyre on the front because it's your control tyre, and then the rear wears out quicker. So this one's got about probably 1500 k so if I use this one on the rear, this one being on the front. Okay, these tyres came from the bin, and uh, but they're still fantastic condition. Well, what I'd name what I do is when this one wears out, I put the old front tire on the rear and then put a new tire on the front. So that way you're always rotating your tires, okay? Always have the best tire on the front and then the old tire on the rear. And then when the rear tire wears out, you put the front on the rear and get a new front rear tire. Which, so front's always perfect. So I gave the tires a clean, oh man, this, these are my favorite tires ever. The GP4000s, fantastic tires, not super puncture preventive, but they're perfect race all-round race tire there is there i really love them and we saved well that in australia cost you about 100 bucks each for some equivalent tires so it's 200 dollars we've just saved these came from the bin if you know you know if you've ever worked in the bike shop you'll be <laughs> you'll be surprised how much ends up in the bin because uh, there's not really a market for it because people don't want to use secondhand stuff that much you know so often sadly as this stuff gets put in the bin and then you have seagulls like me who'll come along and swoop it up and reuse it and give it a second life I mean, there's nothing wrong with this tire, you know. Maybe there's a little nick in there or something, but uh, we can also patch things up. It's 200 bucks. I mean, 200 bucks, that gives you, you know, two weeks of a really, really hot 18-year-old Filipino chicken in the Philippines. So it's like 200 bucks can go into some new tires or can go into other things. So, you know, it's just uh, all about improving the quality of life, isn't it? 
improve in quality of life. So that is the cause of the flat tire, isn't it? See that there? That is, just like I said, that's the rim tape, punctured it. Okay, so this is why I'm not a fan of shitty products because this person probably, you know, put a new, brand new tube in there, pumped it up, and then push, and he's just like, fuck, fuck this suck and shit. You know, that's what happens. So that's why I'm a fan of good, good product. All right, always have good rim strips in there. So this tube's done, we can use that as a hockey strap. And we've got a perfect rim strip in there now. The bike did come with a spare tube, so we will, in our zero budget upgrades, this bike did come with a spare tube, okay? Inclusive, all inclusive. Plus a bag with me. So we've got here, yep, brand new tube. Thanks for coming. You put this bad boy in here, and then this is gonna be really, this is gonna feel really good. Mavic Open Pro with a Conti, oh man, this, this just feels so amazing. Fresh bin rubber. All right, here we go. Let's put this tire on here. And uh, well, I generally line up the valve hole with the branding, so it's easy to find the valve. And then put on one side of the tire first. And then boom, so that, oh, fresh Conti 4000. If you know, you know. If you know, you know, find this valve hole. Make sure there's no dirt on that tube. Otherwise, if there's any bits of grit in there, it can cause a puncture down the track. And then we're gonna tuck it in. Left, right, good night for the tire. And boom. I always find it easier to work with the tire in front of you. You can sit like this, stretch, and then try and get all the air out of this tire, this tube. Starting at the valve, it's gonna work my way around. Still a bit, bit of air in this tube, so it's not really going in too fast. And that's how you put a tire on. This is why this tire ended up in the bin, I think, because these threads, they don't mean anything, just cut them off. <laughs> but if you're a, you know, alien retentive sort of person, that might be a bit triggering for you, so you chuck it to landfill and spend some more coin. Wire shops won't complain at all. You found uh, those in the BE bin? Uh, in a bin. Not sure which shop, but. Oh. Yeah, it's amazing what goes out there. But I'm, I'm always grateful to, to get something on there. I don't need a tile either, I'm just doing it for speed just to get it on there. Oh, like that, there we go. And then it's going to go around, make sure the tube's not pinched under the tire. You don't need tile levers to put a tire on. I was just doing it just for the extra quick way for the video and boom oh, this feels so good but i could do this all day it's all day make sure that tube's not pinched between the tire and it's not now if it is you sort of suck it like that and it, just squash it like that and then the tube sucks under the tire because otherwise if it's, if it's pinched you can pump it up whoosh, punch time let's put some air in this bad boy Speed. It's not pumping up. <laughs> Maybe this tube is bung as well. But we'll soon find out. But anyway, that's the deal. It's uh we might have to oh this tube is done. We might have to actually put a we might have to spend some money on this bike, put a tube in there from one of my batches. Alright, so we do take the tire off. That's how easy it is. Boom. And the tube out. So this tube may be, may be patchable. So it costs me about five cents. Boom. Just find out the cause of the puncture. In this one, let's see if it's that rim strip again. There we go. Sounds like it's down there. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah. There we go. Boom. It is. Yeah, it's boom. It's the rim strip. So that tube's not fixable. 
that's done diddly dun duns. All right, put one of my tubes in there, which also came from the bin. Okay, so we've got it rolling. Oh man, that's gonna be so nice, look at that. Beautiful, absolutely amazing. And these strings, I cut them off. I also cut them up as well, because these end up on, around animals' necks and feet and stuff, so make sure you dispose these properly. Beautiful, wow. Look at that, eh? Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah. There we go, this is the before, let's do an after. And there we go, just a quick little, Quick little polish like that. They haven't even taken the get set off yet, but uh, fantastic. You're very nice rims. So, taking off the free hub body looks pretty good as well. Damn, I'll give it a bit of fresh grease in there. Feels good. Looks Here we go, we've taken it apart. Some of the things, I haven't done the headset yet, we'll do that though. And uh, just give the brakes a bit of a lube. This isn't that. So give them a bit of a lube, they'll come up. This bike's going absolutely going to come alive. The DR2 works perfect. Gave this a bit of a clean. We can give it more of a polish, but we're still gonna give it a basic, a basic, basic service to show you how simple it is to do this stuff. Bottom bearings. Yep, still perfect, you know, still fantastic. A little bit of chain stuck there, not too bad. And derailleur hangers straight, straighten that up. And uh, yeah, these frames are really good. Like this, the stiffness in that is like that. So these are legit, all right. There's a no name brand. Um, but just, yeah, legit stuff. Legit stuff. Fantastic. So got the cranks off here. Just took out the, uh, took them off. I'm going to give them a bit of a, just a clean. Did, not necessary, but, you know, makes things last longer. Give them a clean. And, uh, yeah, why not? Why not? Still got plenty of life left in these rings. Beautiful. Compact. <laughs> We've got a basic little clean here. Yeah, Max is on. And, uh, Hill Persians. B dubs, bro. Got a bit of a clean. Boom, we'll chuck it on the uh, chuck it on the bike. These 10 speed or tegel cranks are very strong, very stiff. We have dropped out the fork, gave it a good clean, just check the tips, make sure everything's legit. And we are, if you know you know, this is the lube we're using, white light and crystal grease. It's a pretty bio sort of biodegradable grease there. And we just clean the bearings out there. You can see here, you can see the vascularity, the veins coming out. Damn. Not even warmed up yet so the, give it a fresh regrease check the condition of the bearings they look pretty good check the condition of the steerer and uh, it looks all a-okay a-okay that's not a ring of death that's just a little thing and this is some glue on in there so you can sort of see here these little impressions are pretty normal these little things what we can do is actually get a, a file and i'll file out the stem a bit more just to take the rough edges off the stem I won't file this obviously, but I'll file the stem. So that looks fine. That's that's where the split ring is. You can sort of see it has been ridden a little bit with loose headset. And the ring of death has just started, but not sufficient to have any issues. And this is just some glue. Some glue on there, so it's in pretty good condition. There's a little bit of a crack there, but that's not gonna be an issue with a long plug in there. And the stock plug that's in there is pretty long. So that's decent. We can put a longer plug in there, but for now this will be okay. So I used a round file. It's just like that. And I got in there and just sort of put it around there just to take that sharp edge off. You can zoom in here. Just in there, you can sort of see there was a sharp edge and that was compressing on this. Now it's nice and smooth. I mean, that should have done at factory level. Yeah, but that's not really what's done at factory level. And also just this little sharp tips here. I filed those off as well. All right, just little things like that. Just take the sharp edges off and it just creates much more longevity on the product. Takes you know 30 seconds. Easy done. Okay, so the bike is done and dusted. This chain's still got plenty of life left. I would put a squirt lube application on there. It's still a little bit dry. We'll run a few uh, few days of squirt on there, but otherwise everything's cleaned up really nicely. Remember the condition this bike is in to start with. It's $400 Australian. Not a uh, crash crack been or stolen. It goes really really nice. It is. Uh, we took everything off pretty much. Got to clean. Gave the fork inspection, we saw we re the headset, tuned the gears, etc. etc. Durace hubs don't, didn't need a, a re-grease yet because they're still like they're just being brand new. Probably put some steel wool on the spokes. It works great. Angle the seat high a bit and uh could put a saddlebag on there, put a light on there, put my some XCR pedals on there. BS 400 bucks basically for the bike. Cat IPM 45, fantastic from racing. 
fantastic mirror to see what's going on behind pacing racing or just in traffic in general so yeah this is a cool little bike excuse me if you are after a bargain bike and you live in australia let me know i can post these out to you do you kill deals as well so there you go and this bike i'll put a probably about a i don't know how many hours did i put into this bike probably 10 hours giving it uh, maybe 10 hours i don't know maybe less than that actually it'll be less than that um but just the cleaning you know and just listen to the podcast i just really enjoy working on this bike uh fantastic okay so get this bike full strip down full inspection everything's ready to roll on it took the bar tape off the bars check the bars for any any cracks or any erosion or anything like that and it's a great bike man it feels really good to bring a bike like this back from you know back from the end almost and uh because what the work i put into this bike if you go to a local bike shop it probably cost you you know three or four hundred bucks maybe you know all the deep cleaning and stuff like that or you can do it yourself you know if you know what you're doing tutorials on youtube to do that so but it's a fantastic bike this is this is world tour this, this is better than any world tour bike right now and if you know you know but a lot of people might laugh at that because they haven't ridden these bikes and haven't ridden a world tour bike I've, I've done both i do both <laughs> this bike any day of the week it's fantastic a little bit small for me so i will sell it but uh otherwise fantastic bike for someone under 180 centimeters 167 to 180 a fantastic bike hill climbing machine big k's ready to roll